Evening YouTube, it's Trev here, something or nothing. I'm out having a camp tonight, up on Dartmoor. It's a Tuesday night, so I thought the moors might be quiet. And uh, recently I've really fancied just taking the tarp out. So that's what I've done. It looks bigger than it is in that pack. There's actually weighed in, including food and water, under nine kilograms. Still, some of you might think that's excessive for one night. So I've just came up to Westmill Tor. Literally, I'm just gonna sleep on a hill. No hiking, just camping. Oh. I'm knackered. <laughs> you wouldn't think I'm the same person who just walked all those mountains in a day up in the Lake District. <laughs> I'm hungry, that's what it is. I haven't had my tea yet and it's gone eight o'clock. Here we are now, better find somewhere to pitch. Somewhere flat. Well, I've bought the Trekology UL140 tonight. So, we'll see what that's like. I've used the UL80 a lot. This one's bigger. Couldn't find the little pump that I bought. <laughs> Lost that already. So I'm gonna use the pump that it comes with. And then I've bought a new OEX sleeping bag but sort of a more of a summer one. Look at the sun rays coming down there tonight. It looks awesome. So I've set a time lapse going of that. Because that's proper, isn't it? Um, and now we're up on the top of West Mill. Someone's left a barbecue down there. <coughs> we'll tuck that round with us. And then in the morning, I'll take that home with me. As if I ain't got enough to carry. Shame people have to do things like that, innit? So it's a bit overcast and cloudy at the moment, but in the night that's meant to all clear off. And I think in the morning, it's gonna be absolutely glorious. So, sun's setting over there. So the sun's gonna rise over there, I'd imagine, behind Steeperton Tor there. So I think if we set up here somewhere, looking out that way, and then in the morning, we get woken up by the sunrise. How does that sound? Right, where's a good spot to go? Somewhere where there's no shit, because I'm in a tarp, I haven't got a bottom on my tent. I could go here. Could go here. Look at that now. Right. Right, so once again, I've got my low alpine air zone. Now it looks absolutely packed, but it's quite lightweight stuff in there. I've got my down jacket that I'll need in a minute. I've got a shield, windshield. Oh, a book of Dartmoor ghosts. My DD hammock super light tarp. Now I think that's under 500 grams. So that's my shelter plus my poles. I think they're under 500 grams. So I think that's a kilo for my shelter. Then I've got my Alpkit Hunker XL bivy bag. My little stove, which I'm a bit frustrated, the drawstring's gone. That's my little titanium mug. Now what's taking up most of the room in here is that. <laughs> That's the UL140, so it's a lightweight sleeping pad. But look at that, it doesn't, I couldn't get it back in that bag because it's got that stupid pump on it. And I'll show you, I've got my sleeping bag in here as well. It's actually taller than my sleeping bag. So this is my new sleeping bag, OEX Evolution Fathom EV 300. So it's not 
it's not a down bag but I fancied a new mummy bag for the summer but I will look to get a down mummy bag for the summer as well because not only do they are they lightweight and warm but they can press a lot better too so that's what's in my bag really making it full plus I've got two litres of water so I can have my meal and a couple of coffees but I probably won't need all that water so there is room still to reduce my weight again so that's not bad is it under nine kilograms yes it's only a night but bringing the tarp that's the game changer isn't it let's set it up so this looks like a nice big area along here let's just drag it out plus all my pegs now i've got 10 pegs i bought these really lightweight things but they have bent a bit but they'll still do the job for now these were fairly cheap on aliexpress so i've got guy ropes attached that's the front what we do we pull it tight like that but we peg not the corner but one in come to the front then we're pegging the corner but in line with the second peg in so we bring it to here and peg it there get rid of that shit I've just kicked it over all my stuff <laughs> We can tweak it in a minute. Now these hiking poles are great for this because it's just literally a clip. You unclip it like that and you can slide it up. So we get the bottom one to the stop, clip it. Then we take this one inside and get it where we want it. So you position the pole see where this strap is and there's like a reinforced bit in there so that's where I've positioned the pole in underneath as so see and now I'm going to do the same again but lower down to the pole at the back let's have a look and the pole in the back here get it up there see just like that we can unclip it take it a little bit higher pulls it a bit tighter now we go up and tighten around the outside and adjust it how we need to. Make it a bit more room. We've got to pull the sides out yet, but you'll be surprised how much room is under this little three by three tarp. Start at the back corner, but not the corner. The corner is going to tuck in under. And the same around the other side. When I'm pushing the pegs, I don't go into the ground like that. If the rope or the tension is coming from that side, I go in opposite. So I push it in at such an angle like that, so that any tension is fighting against the ground. You see the tension's pulling that way. So we stick it in at an angle like that. Then you see how that stays pinned. So we've got the guy rope on the front. Bring that down here, that. and I can slide that, make it tighter, like so. Then these come back to here, which I'm going to hook to that one, up to the middle. Put it back like that. So the same this side, stick them in there, put them tight and then at an angle and then we'll drag this one round, hook him on, put them tight. Right we come to the back end, you can see it's all a bit flapping here, 
actually tuck that corner in what we can do is pull it tight again to get rid of that pulls it nice and tight then we just tuck that in there go tighter than that still I think same with this side now we might be a little bit too high here because that's never going to pin down to the floor is it I'll go in and lower that a touch <clears throat> So I've lowered that touch, now we bring this down. <coughs> and adjust it till it's tight again. <coughs> I think that's going to do us for the night. See though, there's plenty of room in there. It's done all right. <sighs> well, let's set up the bed. Okay. I am going to look to spending a little bit more, something smaller, something lightweight, something a bit more robust. I mean, the UL80 is doing me proud, but I don't know, I'm quite impressed with Nafe's what he's got you know right see there's a pump here could I open that up could be here a minute or two what it is it's like a block of sponge in here you can press it and it presses all the air out and goes into the bag it's getting there isn't it probably enough or you can always get the end put a lungful in just to do the last fill there you go bed for the night so if we go one side we can put all our stuff the other side or could go diagonal perhaps and have all our stuff behind us over in that corner right. got my bivvy bag really lightweight this and then I've got my sleeping bag just clips on there it's a really great compression sack this it looks just like my uh, winter sleeping bag. Let's find out where the hood is. And then the same on here. So they're facing the same direction. You drag it all the way down to the bottom. Bit, oh yeah, there's a head. Now the Trekology mats have got like really high walls. I mean that's the 140 that it refers to is the depth. I'm still waiting for them to confirm the R value of this. They said it was going to be as high as four, I think. If that is a four, that's fantastic. But even so, it doesn't compress very small with that pump. Let's do some food, please. Starving. Might be all right tonight, it's not that windy, but I don't want you to see what I'm doing. Hopefully there's enough in here. As long as I can get a coffee tonight, tomorrow, and eat my food, I'll be happy. 
but it's not the end of the world if I don't get a coffee because I'm only at the bottom of the hill. Just got a dry meal tonight. Why not? I keep them for spare for when I can't be bothered to cook. So tonight, pasta bolognese. 400 litres of water. So I've got a Euro hike, one litre bottle there. They seem to be quite good. Lightweight, metal. Let's get this on. Enjoying the view. That's about it, isn't it? Shut it off. Oh, I missed it up. <laughs> so, put it in there, stir it about, leave it 15 minutes. I mean, the adventure food's all right, and they, they hit the right spot when you're camping, and they're nice and light. But not as nice as your own stuff, so you've prepared yourself, but zip it up, let it stand. While I'm waiting for that, shall we uh, do a Dartmoor legend? It's been a while since I've read one of these, isn't it? This one is called the 9.15pm Ghosts. It's not relevant to this area, but I know that a lot of you I've been asking for a Dartmoor legend for a long time and I always forget. So let's do it now. The 9.15 p.m. Ghosts. There is a fine line between a cottage that could be described as quaint and one that is about to fall down. Millbrook Cottage at Morton Hampstead turned from the former into the latter. The Milton family who lived there during the Second World War sensibly moved out before it fell down around their ears. Behind them, they left long rambling gardens which were used by a local man in which to keep poultry. Now, although midnight is generally accepted as the witching hour for ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, at this derelict cottage a series of ghostly occurrences happened at precisely 9.15pm. The apparitions on each occasion were different. A silhouetted figure, seen against a moonlit snow scene, left no footprints and vanished into thin air. Another man visiting the cottage at 9.15 was grabbed by the throat by an invisible force before being dumped unceremoniously on the ground and a small boy apparently ran through an open doorway, but as the church clock of Morton struck 9.15, the boy disappeared. There were many other disquieting events, which all coincided with this mid-evening maelstrom of mysterious manifestations. If you believe in that sort of thing, just check the time a minute. That's all right, it's gone 9.15, it's... 926. This is a Ghosts of Dartmoor, by the way, by Sally and Chips Barber. It's not very much, 4.99. I got it from a local bookshop. Got some great stories in it, and I will read another one another time. I'll tell you one of the, my most interesting stories on Dartmoor. I don't know if it's in here. One day when there was like snow on Dartmoor, and this is a documented case as well a solitary footprint that stretched for miles like people woke up in the morning and there was just this footprint and it had gone for miles and it had gone over roofs and over the moors really really eerie really interesting but well documented spooky <sighs> shitting myself now well it's about 10 o'clock got myself hot drink I ain't have to put my jacket on yet. It's just nice. It's quite calm. Quite looking forward to this. 
tarp in it. The last time I used this tarp, I was up on Branscombe's Loaf over two years ago. I think it's set upright. <laughs> well, it's upright. Then I'm under it. Quite close to the roads here, it's the only thing. People often ask me, how do you, how do you not get scared when you're out on the moors? I don't get scared, but I get a bit more jumpy when I'm closer to a road. Yeah, I'm all right until people are near. Isn't it weird how every time I come out camping, it's a full moon and I never plan it. <laughs> it's about 11 o'clock at night. I've heard that weird alien noise again. Do you remember last time when I was over on Shellstone tour. I can't remember now what someone said it was. I'm sure it was a grouse. But it, goes <laughs> but it was on this tour a minute ago. So it's really close and really loud. It was like, and then it flew off because it went over there. Someone said it was when they were, it's a noise they make when they dive, but I don't think that's right because it, I literally could hear it swooping across over there. Yep. On the top. It's nice. The open front, obviously. So I can look out. Got my tea station set up, ready for the morning. Even though I think it's empty, I'm out of gas. Uh, following up what I was saying earlier, people say, How do you not get scared when you're out? And I was saying about, I'm more on edge when I'm near with people. But you've got to be rational. Fear is an irrational thing, isn't it? And I know it's easy to say that. I mean, some people might not want to camp in the middle of Dartmoor on their own. They might find that really difficult. Whereas I don't. I sort of think, well, touch wood. <laughs> Nothing's happened so far. Chances are it probably won't, you know? How often do you hear of things happening? So there's no point worrying about what's going to happen. But that being said, I'm the kind of person who'd never do a bungee jump. No. I'd never free fall from a plane or anything like that. That's my fears. And it's the same with ridge walks. I'm not that bothered. So you all have different fears in different places, but I think I'd just freeze up there and I'd make it dangerous. You know, whereas out here, you just got to not worry about it. you just got to try and put it to the back of your mind. And just enjoy it. Just think. I'm here. In the peace. In the quiet. In the middle of the moor. And in six hours. The sun's going to come up. And it's going to be an awesome sunset. The end. No failing that, just get drunk. <laughs> anyway, that's me. It's about half eleven. Good time to retire. I'll see you all in the morning. Jades. Yeah. That was a nice night. Nice and still. Cool. The birds are up. What's the time now? Half past five. Early. I was sort of stirring, waiting for the sunrise. I think I've missed it, it's already up. <laughs> it's alright though, isn't it? Just chilling on a hill. 
That's what we're here for. Ooh. Oh, what happened? I sort of pitched in beyond that rock a bit too much and uh, I sort of sheltered from the sun. So I missed the sunrise <laughs> this morning. Oh, it's hazy this morning, isn't it? Very hazy. It's going to be a nice day though. Oh. oh look, up on Yestor, there's a farmer on a quad bike rounding up sheep. That looks quite the terrain to have to round sheep up on, doesn't it? I'm hoping we've got enough gas in there to boil that water. It sounds like it's going to peter out. Sounds like it is petering out. Yes! Get in! Right, we go free. Azira coffee bags, I tell you, that's the future. Beautiful, real coffee. And then what I do is coffee mate in here and sugar. You can stir in, but I'll tell you what, that'd be the nicest cup of coffee you drink out on a trail. Fresh. Psychology. Get rid of that foam. Look at that. I cannot compress it. It's just ridiculous. How the hell do you compress it? It's worse now. To try and fit it back in this bag. Ridiculous. Poor design. Trackology. Get rid of that stupid pump and that would be a decent mattress. Comfort was second to none. Really comfortable. It wasn't cold. But look at that. I cannot fold it anymore to get a shitty thing in the bag. Shit. That's it, left no trace, only footsteps. Get at it. Oh yeah. And I'm taking this that they left behind. <laughs> 